Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about what causes weight gain. We don't often think about this question because it seems so obvious. Calories, right? Wrong. Calories don't cause obesity. I outlined this in my first book, The Obesity Code, and also its sequel, The Hunger Code, due out in March of 2026. Spend two whole books talking about what causes weight gain, because if you think it's all about calories, then you've already lost. <music> calories don't cause obesity. It's the biggest lie in obesity medicine. So this is the way that most of us think about weight loss. What causes us to gain weight? Well, body fat, which is simply the amount of calories that are stored on the body, equals calories in minus calories out. Okay, you can rewrite it a different way and say that increase in body fat equals the calories in greater than calories out. This is always true and nobody is disputing that. However, it doesn't mean what most people think it means. This is how most of us think about it. The calories in is what we eat, so that's our personal choice. The calories out is both exercise and basal metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories your organs need to generate body heat for your liver, your lungs. And this is considered largely fixed, so therefore it's all about exercise. Since choice of foods and exercise are under conscious control, we can simply lose body fat by eating less, moving more, and therefore we will lose that weight. This causes us to uh, consider obesity as a personal failing. It's a lack of willpower. This is actually not true at all for several reasons. First, this assumes that the control lies here in the, what you eat and how much you exercise, and this is dependent upon the calories in, calories out, and there is nothing that controls the body fat. That's simply not true. We know that there are a number of hormones which affect the amount of body fat. How much body fat somebody carries is very important. In the wild, you never see morbidly obese lions and tigers and giraffes. Why? Because if they carried too much body fat, they wouldn't be able to run away from predators and they wouldn't be able to catch their prey. If they carried too little body fat, they wouldn't be able to survive famine or winter. So how much body fat an animal carries is of vital importance and therefore very, very tightly controlled. In the biblical story of Joseph, they talked about seven years of plenty. What they didn't talk about was an ancient plague of morbid obesity. The second thing is people often say, if you simply eat less, you'll lose weight. It's a mathematical certainty. That's completely false. Why? Because there are actually three variables here, the calories stored, calories in, and your calories out. If you reduce one of these variables, you can balance it with a change in either the body fat or the basal metabolic rate, which is your calories out. Think about it this way. If you store money in the bank, the money stored equals the money in minus the money out. Okay, but just because you make more money doesn't mean that you're going to save more money because they're two fundamentally different things and there's a third variable in there. Same thing here. If you simply eat less, you could lose body fat or you could simply reduce your metabolic rate. You could reduce how many calories you burn. So you eat less, but you burn less and you won't lose body fat. And that doesn't break any laws of thermodynamics. In fact, it is inevitable that your basal metabolic rate is going to drop. People will tell you that if you simply eat 500 calories a day less, you're going to lose about a pound of body fat. So does that mean in one year I will lose 50 pounds and in five years I'll lose 250 pounds? That means I should weigh roughly negative 100 pounds? Absolutely not. 
So as soon as you start to reduce your calories in, your calories spent or your basal metabolic rate immediately starts to go down. In fact, every single study has shown this. I've seen people with basal metabolic rates of 800 calories a day because they were yo-yo dieting, they're controlling their calories, they push their calories down so low that they force their body to reduce their metabolic rate that low. This is not true. The arrow of causality does not go from the calories to the body fat. That's not how the body works. So at the same time, we know that this equation is true. So how does it work? Well, you have to say what causes the increase in body fat? Well, it's hormones. So the major hormone we talk about is insulin. Insulin is a natural hormone. It tells your body to store more body fat. When you eat, your insulin is going to go up, which is going to tell your body, hey, you should store some of this for later. That makes sense. When you don't eat, your insulin is going to fall and your body is going to say, hey, you should release some of those calories you stored. So if you have too much insulin, it's going to tell your body to store more body fat. And therefore, this is going to lead to you eating more. How? Well, you're going to get hungry. Because if you think about why you eat, it's not all your own personal choice. You eat because you're hungry. And you stop eating when you're satiated. So satiety. That is, the insulin is going to affect the body fat, which is going to make you hungry or full so that you gain the weight that your body was told. What if you simply don't eat the number of calories that you need to gain the body fat? Well, very simple. Your body then decreases your basal metabolic rate. It burns fewer calories so that you still gain that body fat. If you simply focus on eating fewer calories, but not focusing on the hormones, what happens is that you are going to try to eat less, but your body's going to make you more hungry. You're going to fight this and fight this and fight this until you break. Then you're going to eat and gain the body fat that the insulin is telling your body to do. Either way, you're going to gain the weight because that's what the hormones told your body to do. So the arrow of causality goes from the increased body fat, which is your, the cause, to the eating behavior, not the eating behavior to the body fat. This does not break any laws of thermodynamics. This is still true, but it recognizes that this is the most important thing. So why does calories in, calories out sound so logical? because it's classic circular logic. Let's write the equation. Increased body fat is caused by calories in greater than calories out. Okay, we agree on that. Now look at this equation. Increased body fat is equal to calories in greater than calories out. These two terms are equal, which means that you can take one of these terms and replace it with the other. Just like if I said three plus four equals seven, anywhere I saw three plus four, I could put 7. And anywhere I saw 7, I could put 3, point, 3, 3 plus 4. So let's replace this term, calories in greater than calories out, with this term. Increased body fat is caused by increased body fat. I haven't said anything about what actually causes it, the same thing that causes it is the thing itself. It gives you no insight into what actually causes the calories in to be greater than the calories out. It's only describing what the process is. So let's ask the question again. Say I get rid of this term and I say increase body fat is caused by excessive insulin. 
Now, this term can be replaced by calories in, calories out. So I can say the increase in calories in over calories out is caused by the hyperinsulinemia. Now that tells you a lot more useful information, which is to say if my insulin levels are too high, how can I bring it down? And what does this mean practically? It simply tells you that certain foods for the same amount of calories are going to stimulate different amounts of insulin. Cookies are going to stimulate more insulin than an egg. So it tells you that cookies are more fattening than eggs. Brownies stimulate more insulin than spinach. So therefore, brownies are more fattening than spinach. Why? Because the foods release the hormones, which is information. So food contains not just the calorie, but it also contains the instructions of what to do with those calories. It tells your body, should I store those calories as body fat or should I burn those calories? If we simply take this equation now, and turn it around and simply move to the calories in equals body fat plus calories out. I simply move the calories out over here. Same equation, energy balance equation. But what it looks like here is that for every calorie you eat, your body can either store it as body fat or burn it for energy. And that's the difference. Same calories, same number of calories. The difference is, does it store or does it burn? And that depends on the hormones. You got to focus on the hormones. And it doesn't mean anything other than some calories are good and some calories are bad. Some calories are more fattening than other calories. That's it. And that's just common sense. So anytime somebody tells you you should just count your calories, you should cut your calories, they don't understand that food also contains information which tells you about the hormones and what your body is supposed to do with those calories. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.